Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, you will learn all about direct and indirect or reported speech. We will look at converting the three main types of sentences, statements, questions, and requests, instructions, or advice from direct to indirect speech. There are lots of examples and exercises throughout the video for you to practice and make sure to watch all the way to the end because there is a final quiz to test your understanding. So let's get started. So what do we mean by direct and indirect speech? Well, these are two ways of saying what someone else said in the past. For example, last weekend, some friends and I were planning to go see a movie. But one friend, Ben, couldn't join us. Ben said, I have a dental appointment this evening, meaning he had to go to the dentist so he couldn't come with us. Now here, I'm repeating Ben's words exactly or directly without making any changes. This is called direct speech. But we don't always repeat the other person's words exactly because the words are not important. The message is important. So we can say it like this instead. Ben said that he had a dental appointment that evening. This form is called indirect speech. It's also called reported speech because like a news reporter, we are reporting that other person's words. Now, I want you to notice a couple of differences between the direct and indirect sentences. When we write direct speech, we always put quotation marks around the original words. This is to show that we are repeating the words exactly without any change. But in indirect speech, we don't use quotation marks. The second point is the word that. This is used in indirect speech, but it is never used in direct speech. Now, in informal situations, we can often leave it out in reported speech like this. Ben said he had a dental appointment that evening. Informally, that's okay. But in formal situations, don't leave out that. These are the two basic differences. So now let's talk about how to convert a sentence from direct to indirect speech. There are three steps for doing this. Change the pronouns, backshift the tense, and change the time and place expressions. In the example, you see that the pronoun I in direct speech has become he in the reported sentence. He refers to Ben. This is the first step. Next, the verb has changed from have to had. When Ben spoke, his words were in the present tense. But now when we report those words, we change them to the past tense. This is called backshifting, that is shifting the tense back to the past. And we also see that this evening, which is a time expression, has become that evening. These are the three main changes that we make when converting a sentence from direct to indirect speech. All right, let's now practice doing these steps with an exercise. We're going to go through 15 sentences. Here's the first one. Sarah said, I drink black coffee every morning. How would you change this to indirect speech? Stop the video and think about it, then play the video again and continue. The indirect speech sentence is, Sarah said that she drank black coffee every morning. I becomes she, that's step number one, change the pronouns. Drink, which is in the present simple tense, becomes drank, past simple. This is the second step, backshift the tense. There are no time or place expressions here, so we don't need step three. Okay, let's move on to sentence number two. Naveen said, I am learning to play the guitar. How would you change this? Stop the video and try it. Naveen said that he was learning to play the guitar. I changes to he. Am learning, present continuous tense, changes to was learning, past continuous. Next sentence. My son is graduating next week, she said with great excitement. We see the reporting clause, she said with great excitement, at the end of the sentence. This is very common. So how would you change this? When we change a sentence to indirect speech, we almost always put that reporting clause at the beginning. She said with great excitement that. The words my son become her son, 
and we backshift the tense. So my son is graduating becomes her son was graduating and next week is a time expression. We can either say the next week or the following week. So she said with great excitement that her son was graduating the next week or the following week. Number four, I quit my job a week ago, he confessed to his wife. Confessed means that he admitted the truth to his wife. So how do we change it? He confessed to his wife that he had quit his job a week before. Notice that in the direct quote, the verb is already in the past simple tense, quit. When we backshift a past simple tense verb, it changes to the past perfect, had quit. And ago changes to before in indirect speech, that's just a rule. Okay, next sentence. Hema didn't come to work yesterday, the manager told me. Try to change it. The answer is, the manager told me that Hema hadn't come to work. Now, didn't come is a past simple tense negative, which changes to hadn't come, past perfect negative. Then we have yesterday, which becomes either the previous day or the day before. Both are correct. So the manager told me that Hema hadn't come to work the previous day or the day before. Sentence number six is a little challenging. The kid told his parents, I was watching TV and the power went out. How would you change it? The kid told his parents that he had been watching TV and the power had gone out. Was watching is a past continuous verb. It gets backshifted to a past perfect continuous verb, had been watching. And the power went out is past simple. It becomes the power had gone out. Next one. I have seen the movie three times already, I explained. Answer. I explained that I had seen the movie three times already. Have seen becomes had seen. So this means that if you have a present perfect verb, it changes to the past perfect when you backshift it. So what about this sentence? We have been waiting for over two hours, they complained. They complained that they had been waiting for over two hours. Have been waiting is a present perfect continuous verb. It gets backshifted to had been waiting, past perfect continuous. Number nine. I will pick you up at the airport tomorrow, he promised. He promised that he would pick me up at the airport the next or the following day. Here we see that the modal verb will has been changed to its past form would. And tomorrow has become the next day or the following day, both mean the same thing. Now with the verb promise, you can also make the sentence like this. He promised to pick me up at the airport the following day. This is a special use of the verb promise, using to plus an infinitive verb that's also correct. Okay, number 10. I would like to buy this necklace, she told the shop assistant. Here, the modal verb would is used. This is already a past form and there's no way to backshift it. There's no past perfect for modal verbs. So we just say, she told the shop assistant that she would like to buy the or that necklace. We can change this necklace to the necklace or that necklace. Both are okay. Next sentence. The girl said, my brother and I are going to have pizza tonight. This one is a little tricky. We start with the girl said that and then we have my brother and I. This becomes she and her brother. Only with I, we put the other person first. My brother and I, my friend and I, John and I, etc. But with other pronouns, we put the pronoun first. She and her brother. Are going to becomes were going to. Now, if we had am or is going to, we would change that to was going to. But here we have are and that becomes were. Tonight becomes that night. So, the girl said that she and her brother were going to have pizza that night. Next one. I can speak four languages, Chad boasted. Boast means to brag or talk proudly about yourself. Try to change this. The indirect speech sentence is, Chad boasted that he could speak four languages. 
Notice that can has become could. Sentence number 13. Shannon said, we may go to Japan on vacation. The answer, Shannon said that they might go to Japan on vacation. We has become they. May has changed to might because that's the past form. Next sentence. His driving instructor told him, you must obey traffic laws. The answer, his driving instructor told him that he must obey or he had to obey traffic laws. Must can either stay the same or you can say had to. But if you have mustn't in the sentence, then you have to say mustn't. For example, the police officer said, you mustn't park here. The reported sentence is, the police officer said that I mustn't park there. So mustn't stays as mustn't. All right, here's the last sentence in this exercise. Her father said, you should take your studies more seriously. Answer, her father said that she should take her studies more seriously. Should is already the past tense of shall, so we leave it unchanged. This is true of all the past tense modals. We saw would before. Similarly, we don't backshift could or might. We leave them as they are. Now, before we move on, I want to point out a couple of things. First, about backshifting tenses. In some situations, when we go from direct to indirect speech, we don't backshift the tense. For example, let's say that at the workplace, I ask a colleague of mine, Tanya, to help me with something. But Tanya says, I can't help you, sorry. I have a lot of work to do. If I want to convey this message to someone else immediately, then I might say, Tanya says she can't help me because she has a lot of work to do. Notice that the reporting verb is in the present tense, says, and the other verbs in the sentence also stay in the present, can't help and has. This is because I am reporting her words immediately. There's not much time delay, so backshifting is not all that important. We also see this form in the news a lot when current events are being reported. These are both indirect speech sentences. The retail chain has announced that it will open two more stores next month. The police chief said that the investigation is still ongoing. In sentence number two, the reporting verb is has announced, a present perfect form. And in number three, the reporting verb is said, past simple. Maybe the police chief said these words in a recent interview. But in both sentences, there is no backshifting of the tense in reported speech because the news is recent. Also, in the second sentence, we see the time expression next month has not been changed to the next or the following month. That's because next month is still in the future for us when we report this. So this is the first point. The next point is about the verbs say, and tell. You may have noticed in some of the previous examples that tell is followed by a person like me, him, her, etc. I have a few sentences here from the last exercise. The first one says, the manager told me. In the second, she told the shop assistant. And in the third, the kid told his parents. Grammatically, this person is called an indirect object. The rule is that the verb tell must take an indirect object, that is, some person. So if you remove that indirect object, it's grammatically incorrect. Now the verb say is the opposite of this. Say must not take an indirect object. In all of these examples, we can use say, but then we have to remove the indirect object. In fact, many English learners make the common mistake of putting an indirect object after say, like said me or said him, that's wrong, and you should avoid it. In some situations, you might see this form. The manager said to me, she said to the shop assistant, the kid said to his parents, etc. This is grammatically correct, but it's not very common. I'm showing it to you so that you are aware of it, but if you need to include an indirect object, use tell. If you don't need an indirect object, use say. All right, let's now move on and talk about changing questions from direct to indirect speech. Here's an example. What do you want? She asked me. That's the direct speech question. In indirect or reported speech, this becomes, 
She asked me what I wanted. The first thing to notice here is that we've used the reporting verb ask and not say or tell. Second, just like in statements, we've changed the pronoun from you to I and we've backshifted the tense. Want has become wanted. This sentence has no time or place expressions, but if there are any in a question, then we change those two. But there's another important change we've made here, the word order. When going from direct to indirect speech, we've kept the question word what, but we've removed the auxiliary verb do, then you becomes I and want becomes wanted. So what we have here is not a question form, but a statement. I wanted. This has the same order as a past simple tense statement. And for that reason, we don't put a question mark at the end of a reported question. Notice that there is only a period or a full stop at the end. If you put a question mark after an indirect question, that's wrong. Okay, next example. He asked, where did Salman go yesterday? Let's convert this. We keep the question word where. So, he asked where. Now, the direct speech question is in the past simple tense. This needs to get backshifted to the past perfect and we need to put it in statement form. So, he asked where Salman had gone the day before or the previous day. Both are okay. I'd like you to notice something with the verb ask. In the first example, we saw she asked me and in this example, just he asked with no object. Both of these are correct because the verb ask can be used with or without an object. Just keep that in mind. All right, here's one more question, but you'll notice that there's something different about it. Do you like coffee? She asked. What's different? Well, there's no question word like what, where, why, etc. So this is a yes or no question. How do we change this to reported speech? The process is almost the same. We start with the reporting verb, she asked, and now, because we don't have a question word, we use either if or whether. I'm going to use if here, and then we just put the rest of the sentence in the form of a statement, and we backshift the tense. She asked if I liked coffee. Again, no question mark. Okay, let's do an exercise now to practice changing questions from direct to indirect speech. We will go through nine sentences. Here's the first one. He asked her, why is the baby crying? How would you change this to indirect speech? First, he asked her why. Now we need to convert the question into a statement form. It's in the present continuous tense, so we backshift that to a past continuous statement. So he asked her why the baby was crying. The baby was crying is a past continuous tense statement. Number two, does this hotel have a swimming pool? The guests inquired. Try to change it. This is a yes or no question, so we need if or whether. I'll use whether this time. The guests inquired whether. And now the question, which is in the present simple tense, needs to be backshifted to the past simple. The guests inquired whether the hotel had a swimming pool. You could also say that hotel instead of the hotel. All right, next one. Who has eaten all the cookies? Asked Rick's mother. The reported question is, Rick's mother asked who had eaten all the cookies. Next sentence. Are they leaving tomorrow morning? Shivani asked. It changes to, Shivani asked if they were leaving the next morning or the following morning. In the place of if, you can use whether if you want. Number five, he asked, how long should I boil an egg? The reported question is, he asked how long he should boil an egg. Remember, should does not backshift. Next question, Colton asked me, have you received the package? Now, I'm a little tired of using the verb ask, so I'm going to use a different question report verb. Colton wanted to know if I had received the package. So instead of asked, I've said wanted to know. 
Then there's if, because this is a yes or no question. And the present perfect question in direct speech gets backshifted to a past perfect tense statement. Okay, next one. When will your sister get here? She asked her husband. She asked her husband when his sister would get there. Number eight, why didn't you attend the meeting? My boss questioned. My boss questioned why I hadn't attended the meeting. The question in direct speech here is a past simple tense negative form. We backshift it to a past perfect negative statement. And the last one, didn't Nicole tell you we were coming today? He asked. He asked whether Nicole hadn't told us that they were coming that day. Okay, let's move on to the next topic now, reporting requests, instructions, and advice. When people make a polite request, they often phrase it in the form of a yes or no question. For example, Arjun asked me, can you lend me $200? This is a request for a loan. You can report it just like a yes or no question. Arjun asked me if I could lend him $200. This is correct, but there's another way to do it. We can say, Arjun asked me to lend him $200. The structure of this sentence is the verb ask plus an object. Object is a grammatical term. What we mean here is a person, like asked me in this sentence, plus a two infinitive verb. That is, the preposition to, plus a verb in its base form, like to lend. Here's the next example. Turn off the TV, his mother told him. Obviously, this is not a polite request. It's an instruction. In fact, it's a command. So instead of the verb ask, we're going to use the stronger verb tell. His mother told him to turn off the TV. So the guideline here is use ask for requests and tell for instructions, orders, or commands. If a request or command is negative, you just add not before to. Don't feed the animals, the zookeeper told us. We change this to indirect speech like this. The zookeeper told us not to feed the animals. This next example, which we saw in a previous exercise, expresses advice. Her father said, you should take your studies more seriously. If you remember from the exercise, we can convert this to indirect speech as her father said that she should take her studies more seriously. But since her father is giving her advice, we can use the verb advise. Her father advised her to take her studies more seriously. Simple. All right, it's time for another exercise to practice all of this. I have six sentences for you this time. Some of these sentences are requests Others are instructions or commands, and some express advice. And you have to change them all to reported speech. Here's the first one. He asked Jasmine, would you be able to take care of my pets while I'm away? How would you change this? This is a polite request, so we need to use the verb ask here. So he asked Jasmine to take care of his pets while he was away. Okay, number two. Please leave your bags with the bellhop, the receptionist told us. Try to change it. Now this is a polite request, but it's also an instruction for the guests at the hotel. So you can use both ask and tell. You can use ask because this is quite polite, but at the same time it's also an instruction, so tell is also okay. I'm going to use tell. The receptionist told us to leave our bags with the bellhop. Next one. Please do not bring food into the park. Set a sign at the entrance. How would you change it? This is an instruction and we can say a sign at the entrance told us not to bring food into the park, but it's a general sign meant for everybody. So in this case, we can just use the verb say as in the direct speech sentence. A sign at the entrance said not to bring food into the park. Because we're using the verb say, there is no object. Remember, say does not take an indirect object. Next sentence, get out of my office, her boss yelled. To yell means to shout with anger. Try to change it. 
Her boss told her to get out of his office. If you want to make it stronger, you can even say her boss ordered her to get out of his office. Now in this reported sentence, the boss is male. That's why we've said to get out of his office. But of course, if the boss were female, the pronoun would be her. Number five, Philip's doctor told him you should exercise more. You can't say Philip's doctor told him to exercise more, but better is Philip's doctor advised him to exercise more. And last one, I wouldn't eat that pizza if I were you, her friend said to her. Now this sentence looks like a conditional, and it is, but this is a common way of giving advice. I would do this or I wouldn't do that if I were you. So we can once again use the verb advise. Her friend advised her not to eat the pizza. You can also say that pizza means the same thing. All right, good job. Up to now, we have practiced converting statements, questions, requests, instructions, and advice from direct to indirect speech. So if you're ready, we're going to put all of this together with a final quiz. There are 10 sentences on the screen. I want you to change each one from direct to indirect speech. Stop the video now, do the exercise, then play the video again and check. All right, here are the answers. How many did you get right? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. As always, happy learning, and I will see you in another lesson soon.